in this lesson, we'll go through a simple run through of creating a 3D model in ZBrush. So let's just look at the process as a whole, okay? As I said, the tool palette is going to be really key in getting started. So what we want to do is draw out our 3D geometry. And the 3D geometry is going to exist as a tool or as a Z tool. That's what we're going to save it as, and that's what we're going to load it as. So if you have an external tool that you want to load in, you can go to Load Tool. Okay, but we're going to start with some just primitive geometry. So let's say we've already loaded it in, and we open up the tool the tool area here by clicking on this large button. And this is going to give us all the, the options that we have here. So you can see lots of different primitive shapes. Let's just bring in a sphere. So we'll select our sphere. And with the sphere selected, you can see nothing actually exists on our canvas yet. What we have to do is draw the sphere out onto our canvas. So I'm just going to click and drag, or if you have a tablet, you can use that as well. I'm just going to click and drag to draw this out. And as I drag, it creates a larger or smaller sphere. You can see that. When I let off the mouse, our sphere exists in our canvas. But right now, it's not a 3D object in the traditional sense that we would think. So if I were to come in here and try to rotate around, and I'll use the Alt key to do that, nothing is going to happen. That's because we're not in edit mode. We always have to go over to edit mode when we want to work with our geometry as a 3D object. So we'll explain, uh, we'll talk about more about the, uh, the two and a half D nature of the canvas, but um, if we just look at this, you can see I can draw additional spheres and they do kind of know where the other spheres are, but it's not something where I can get in and rotate around this. It's more of a sort of two and a half D composition that I can create with depth. Okay, so what you want to do is actually draw out your tool and then go to edit mode immediately. So if we want to clear off uh, any information on our canvas, we can hit control N to do that. Now let's draw out our sphere again. So we'll draw out our sphere and this time I'll just hit the T key or I'll push this button right here, edit. So let me hit the T key. Now we're in edit mode and now we can come in here and if I hit alt I can move around the object. If I just click with the left mouse button, I can rotate around. Hopefully you can kind of see that. Or if I hit Alt, click, and then let go of Alt, I can move in and out. So it's going to take a little bit of getting used to probably, but Alt key to move around. Just rotate with no hotkeys selected. Alt and then click, let go of Alt to move in and out. So now we can actually work with this as a 3D object. So what we want to do at this point is subdivide it. That's a big part of what ZBrush is all about, is getting enough polygons in here to create some really cool effects by sculpting on this. That's going to be located here on the different parts of our tool palette under Geometry. So you can see here, this looks a particular way. That's because we go down to Initialize, we do still have settings that we can change the shape of the sphere because it's not yet a polygon mesh. It's still a primitive. So it is on our canvas and we are able to work with it. But in order to sculpt it, we need it to be a polygon mesh. So to create it as a polygon mesh, we're going to have this object in edit mode so we can move around it. And we'll just go up here to make poly mesh 3D. So we'll click that. And what happens is it now creates a polygon mesh. And if we look under geometry now, you can see we get a lot of other options in here. Okay, in addition to the divide. So now we want to divide our mesh because right now, if we select a brush over here, you can see all the different brushes. We're just going to stick with standard and the standard stroke. If I click and drag across the surface, what I'm getting is an addition. Say, so, so it's pulling out the geometry. I'm also painting with color, which in this case is just white, so you can't really tell the difference. And I'm pulling this out based on this Z intensity. Okay, and we'll talk more about kind of the, the sculpting basics. But if we want to get a higher resolution, we're going to hit Control D, and you can see that divides our mesh. So basically, if it, if you have one quad, it's divided it into four new quads. You can do the same thing by hitting this button here. And as you divide, you can see those levels existing over here. We'll talk more about that again later. But it just lets you get a much finer stroke, and you can change your draw size to get different effects. You can also use different hotkeys to change the way 
that the material is pulled out or pushed in. Now in ZBrush, you also have a history on each of your objects. So we have the sphere that we created. If you look right above the canvas, you'll see these little ticks, and then one of them is grayed in. So this is our undo history. We can actually click and drag this history to undo back to any spot we'd like to for that particular tool. So if I want to go back to before I actually made a stroke, I can go back all the way to the beginning there. We converted it to a polygon. Or if I want to just go back to this point and then redo that stroke, I can start a new stroke from there. Now if I want to save this to be able to work on it later, I'm going to stay in the tool palette and I'm going to save it as a tool, as a Z tool. We'll talk more about this in, I think, Lesson 6 when we talk about files. But this is actually where we're going to save the individual models. There are other things that we can save out of ZBrush, but the Z tool is what we want to concentrate on in saving out our 3D objects. Okay. Now, as you're rotating around as well, you can also hit the Shift key, and that'll snap to the closest side view, front view of your uh, model as well. Okay, so with that kind of quick run through, the, I, I just want to get you the idea of drawing out a Z tool and going to edit mode and then you're able to work with it as a 3D object. Make sure that you convert your primitives, if you're using primitives, to poly mesh because that's how we're going to be able to do the sculpting and be able to, again, go in here and subdivide it and work with it in that way. So next, let's talk a little bit more about the 2.5D canvas and what that means in terms of what we can do here in ZBrush. So we'll talk about that next.